Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, I decided to do this video on plaster dipped flowers. Um, my sister and I had tried this in a previous video and I thought it was a fail. I just didn't think it did well at all. But then I started reading the comments and, um, and got some good suggestions that I thought might make a really big difference. So I decided to do an update on this and, and uh, make those changes and see what kind of um, result I get. So one viewer said to uh, not make this uh, plaster of Paris and water to the consistency of yogurt like the recipe that I saw on Pinterest said. Uh, she said to make it more like the consistency of glue. And that made more sense because when it's thicker, it's just hard to get it to... Um, to um, not be real clumpy and too full. Uh, and as you could see there, uh, I added some Elmer's glue. Another vi uh, viewer asked, uh, mentioned doing putting glue in. And um, so I thought that made a lot of sense uh, because it would be something to kind of help it hold together better when it dries because one of the issues that I had with the other um, ones that I did was that um, they shed a lot. So I didn't feel like it was going to hold up good at all. So adding the glue and making it thinner, both of those were super uh, suggestions, I thought. Another suggestion was to, instead of laying it on wax paper like... Uh, my directions told me um, hang it on a clothesline. So I just uh, took some string and made me a little makeshift clothesline here uh, at my workstation. And uh, I'm just taking clothespins and hanging them. And I'm starting out hanging them upside down. And then some of these flowers will need to be turned as it starts to harden it doesn't take very long for that to happen but uh, as you can see these are working out pretty well this way so thanks to all of you who uh, gave me such good suggestions uh, i'm learning so much from you guys uh, i feel like i'm learning more from you guys than you are from me now this little flower here was one from the dollar tree and i will say that it wasn't a good one to dip it just I guess it was too floppy and it just didn't hold the shape the way I wanted it to. So uh, that one ended up in the trash. Uh, but I think that everything else that I dipped worked out really well. So um, making this plaster of Paris and water to the consistency of uh, glue and adding a little glue and I just kind of guessed, I, I don't really know how much I put in, uh, maybe a few tablespoons, um, but uh, adding that glue was a really good idea. And, um, and then hanging these to dry so that they're not laying in a puddle uh, that hardens, and that was another problem that I had the last time. Uh, so hanging them was also a good idea. So, um, this, this made all the difference in the world making these changes. So if you're going to do this, uh, then it did work out. The last time I said I probably won't do it again, uh, but, but now I, I will. Um, but as you can see, it's very messy. So um, I, got, I got it all over me and all over my workstation. But uh, as long as you clean it up pretty soon after, it'll... It'll all come off. So, whenever I finish making all the, dipping all these flowers, then I'm going to show you some things that you can do with these flowers to, uh, things you can embellish with them. 
So, uh, I put some on a book stack in my last video, and I thought that worked out really well. And I think I also put some in a picture frame. So, uh, I will be doing a different version of that, but not the book stacks. Now, these took uh, probably a couple hours to dry completely, but now I did have them hanging in the sun. So, on a warm day, a couple hours. But now, if it's not warm, it'll take longer than that. So, now, this is a simple thing that, that I'm going to do with one of these. Is uh, just tie some scraps of fabric um, and make kind of a shabby bow and, and tie it around the candlestick. And then, after I tie that around the candlestick, then I'm going to glue... Uh, one of these flowers and uh, just a little greenery with it um, and I'm gonna glue that on that bow and that will just kind of dress up this little candlestick now I think this idea would be pretty for Christmas you could um, you could tie this around a, a white candlestick like this and then you could dip some um, some faux poinsettias and um, and that would be pretty glued on this now making sure that my glue here is on the cloth uh, instead of on the candlestick because it wouldn't hold well on that wood plus I want to be able to take this off if I decide to now you could leave it like this with just this little bloom or I'm going to add just a little bit of uh, dipped greenery. Now I didn't mention that after these uh, flowers dried well, then I sprayed them with some Rust-Oleum Matte Finish Clear Coat because I felt like that would help them hold up better. So there is the first item that I'm using these on. And then for the next item, I'm going to do some framed, um, some framed art. So I'm going to start out with this little frame that I thrifted for 99 cents. And uh, it was in good condition. So all I'm going to need to do is add that art on the inside. And the way I'm going to do that is just use this piece of glass and I'm going to cover it in uh, some uh, tea stained or coffee stained rather tea towel. And um, I've just kind of lightly coffee stained this tea towel and have cut it to, uh, to fit over this uh, glass. And I'm just going to kind of overlap it and hot glue that on and then put it back in the frame. Now, if you've never used tea towel, uh, you can buy them. I think they come two or three to a pack in, at the Dollar General. And then Walmart has uh, maybe six or so in a pack. And they're not very expensive at all. And they're easy to rip. And they just make really good crafting fabric. Now, I'm taking my Kind Disregard stamp and inking it up, and I'm just going to put that lightly in the background on this, on this tea towel. And that will give me kind of a background for my flowers, because I'm just going to arrange some of those flowers on this, and, um, and then uh, just put it in the frame. And I'm keeping this frame natural. I'm not going to try to paint that or anything because I felt like it would go well with this uh, flower. So this one is just very simple. Like I said, I just hot glue that onto the glass and then glue my flowers on the front and then this one will be finished. And obviously here you could uh, put this in the frame first and then uh, glue your flowers on. But uh, I glued my flowers on and then added it to the frame. So that will quickly turn this little plain frame into uh, a piece of art. And then it'll be a simple neutral piece of art that will go with just about any decor. 
And then for the next piece, I'm gonna do another piece of framed art. And I'm gonna start with uh, another frame that I thrifted. And this one is um, actually turned out to be plastic. I couldn't tell it when I bought it, but when I started to take it apart, realized that it was plastic, but it, it's gonna work out really well. Because chalk paint will stick to most anything and it sticks to paint really well. Now, I'm gonna be putting cloth directly on this back piece and because of that um, I'm just going to paint this because I don't want this darker wood or whatever this is I think it's pressed wood of some kind uh, I don't want it showing through my um, fabric so I give this a, a coat of uh, the color cotton and uh, and then I'm gonna paint my frame in the color sea glass. Now I could have uh, put my fabric directly on the glass and probably should have, but I, I didn't do that. And um, it'll work out either way, but um, when I can avoid the glass, I do simply because um, sometimes people don't realize that it will break and um, I actually sold a larger piece to a lady one time and um, she had her large dog in the back and it stepped on that art and broke the glass um, obviously she she wouldn't have wanted her dog on it even if it didn't have glass but because it did have glass i ended up replacing that for her but uh so if you put your cloth over glass just make sure you, that when you when you sell it you let them know that there is glass underneath that so i'm able to cover this well with just one coat and as you can see i'm painting with um with a fan brush and um, that keeps the um, brush strokes from showing as badly. And so since I'm uh, just gonna be putting one coat on this, I thought it would cover better if I just used a fan brush. So once I get this covered well and let it dry, then I'm gonna be putting some white wax on this because here, there's some detail here for um, for that white wax to settle into and um, the white wax really made a big difference. Now when I put this white wax on, um, after I got it on, the, on all of it, then I decided that I was going to also try to get some distress out of this. So, um, so I just rubbed extra hard and, and just used some elbow grease and got uh, got some distress out of this also since that plastic underneath was a dark color. Then I thrifted some really pretty uh, fabric that I'm gonna be using in the background of this. So now I'll ra arrange some of these flowers. I just took a couple of these flowers and tied some ribbon around it. And then I'll glue that to the center and um, just make a little arrangement. Now I forgot to mention here that when you attach these flowers on these on the board like this, uh, make sure that when you put the fabric on the board that you put some glue in the center also and not just around the edges because the weight of the flowers may cause your fabric to kind of pull away. So just make sure you glue it in the center also and then uh, glue your flowers down and this arrangement left a little space on the bottom so I'm just going to take a piece of tea towel uh, that I've cut into a little rectangle and put a stamp on and I just put a little scripture there uh, stamped it right on that little piece of fabric and now I'm going to uh, just glue that to that little space on the bottom and then this one will be complete and I think this one screams cottage. I think it really has that cottage look. Uh, so.
So all these didn't take very long, but this last one is going to be a little bit more time consuming. It's still very easy, but just a little time consuming. Then I thrifted this uh, this picture, and uh, I think this was an. It said Hobby Lobby on the back, so I think it was an older style Hobby Lobby piece. So I'm just going to take everything out of the frame. And then I, uh, I already have a, a dark frame, and that's going to be a good distress color. And um, but I'm gonna on that gold, I'm gonna kind of add some dull black to that, so that when I, um, I'm not gonna be distressing this, but I am gonna be using some um, crackle medium on it and do a crackle finish. So uh, when that shows through i don't want that gold showing through i just want it all to be darker so i'm just giving this just a haphazard coat of anything dark um, dark brown probably would have been even better because this frame is just a very dark brown uh, but didn't have that handy and i just grabbed what i had handy and i just wanted to get some dark on there so i put that on there and let it dry well and then, then I can put my crackle medium on it. Now you can use an, an actual crackle medium, which is what I'm doing. I'm using the Dixie Belle, but Elmer's glue works really good too. Uh, I forgot to mention here that I didn't want that sharp black showing through, so I'm going over this with just a little bit of brown, and I think this is the color pine cone. Um, I had forgotten that I made this decision, and obviously that's just a matter of preference, but I wanted this to have more of an aged crack instead of just that real sharp black. So that's why I decided to do this. So if you haven't guessed, I'm gonna be using pumpkins on this one. And this is one from the Dollar Tree and they come in uh, obviously one piece, but there are two sections uh, that are just attached together so they're very easy to separate but now this little pumpkin is a different story uh, as it turns out it was solid so I'm using my exacto knife here and I think it's going to be pretty simple just to kind of cut around the outer edge and then pull it apart but it wasn't that simple I had to just really work with it and then get it cut in half I can think of a lot of tools that would have been easier uh, to use than this, but I'd already started with it, so just decided to finish. So now I'm uh, putting the color Gravel Road on, on these as a base coat because I'm going to be painting these mostly white, um, but uh, I wanted a good base coat so that I would have some shading. And before I let these dry, I went ahead and added some buttercream. And I know I'm probably getting a little bit of gray paint in my buttercream, but um, I don't get much in it. And um, I just want to do this while it's still wet. And I could have poured some of my paint out in a container, but I get in a hurry and don't do that. I go through my paint so quickly that I don't worry about contaminating it, uh, but I do need to be more careful not to get another color in my buttercream. But I just do this on all, uh, on, actually I end up doing on all three of them, but I don't use all three pumpkins. I just decide to use one small one and one large one. So once I get this coat on here, I let it dry well, and then I go over it with just a regular cotton white and and then i just kind of i decided at that point that i want to add just a little bit of that sea glass color that i used earlier on a frame and um and just kind of put a little bit of that here and there just dry brush it on after it dries and then i decided after that that i still wanted uh, some more dimension and color and i wanted to warm this up a little bit so i let it dry well and uh, use some um, Van Dyke brown glaze. And uh, then I was happy with the color that I ended up with. And while I wait on those pumpkins to dry, then I go ahead and put some of that crackle medium on my frame. 
and I didn't film it, but um, once I let this crackle medium dry, then I went over this frame with one heavy coat of the color buttercream. And then when this cracked, um, it really had an antique look to it. So then all I had to do was uh, spray some clear matte finish on it and, um, and then it was ready to put the R in. And now this is the board that was in the frame. So uh, I'm just gonna be doing some Mod Podge, uh, some decoupaging on this and I'm gonna just do some layering. So I'm starting with this, uh, I guess it's almost a flesh tone um, tissue wrap. So I just put, a, put that tissue wrap straight on to that Mod Podge. And I don't bother smoothing it out because I want it to be uh, kind of wrinkly and uh, add some texture. So I'm just going to keep adding layers uh, until I get uh, enough texture on it. And obviously I don't want that board showing through, but I'm not worried about that because I'm going to be layering some different decoupage on this. I want to give it more of a um, antique look and give it some character. So I'm going to be layering several pieces on this. And I would say that this is where Thrift Flip meets junk journaling or scrapbooking. If you've ever seen that done, uh, then that's kind of the, the type of art that I'm going to be putting in this. And I'm not going to worry with the excess around the edges because once that's done, I'll trim it and then I'll go over it with some sandpaper and neaten up those edges. Now here I'm just kind of taking some torn uh, pieces of of paper and decoupaging those on. Uh, but I'm not just going to be using the tissue wrap, I'm going to be using some other paper. And I'm going to start with some vintage book pages. So I've just torn pieces off and I'm just laying those randomly and decoupaging those on. Uh, here it really doesn't matter what you do. You can just uh, layer it in any order that you want it. Uh, random is better. And, um, and I like the look of the book page um, down and then some of that tissue wrap just kind of laid over the top of it because you can see through it. Uh, but it just gives it more texture and more interest and this part is just really fun to do. You can just build it and build it until you like the look. And here I'm adding some lighter book pages uh, to um, just to give it some more dimension and color. So I just kind of randomly lay pieces of that down and decoupage that on. And it doesn't look like much at this point, but it, it just starts to come together at some point and you'll know when to stop when it, when it just starts to come together. Now I'm using some of my script stamps and uh, you could use any kind you want here. I'm just using different scripts and I am uh, decoupaging those onto uh, one layer of of a napkin. So this is the inner layer of the napkin that doesn't have any print on it. And um, I'm just kind of decoupaging this on. Uh, and then I'll tear these pieces up and, uh, and I'll put those on just like I did the others. And these will show the script, but then again, you'll be able to see through them and you'll see some of that, those book pages underneath and it just really starts to create a really neat look. I think it's really important here that when you tear this out that you don't leave any of the straight edges. Uh, so just make sure every piece has torn edges all the way around. I think that just really uh, helps the look. And I think for this look, the more layers you add, the better it looks. Uh, so just if you're not happy with what you have, that just keep adding until you are happy. 
When I got finished with it, I just cut around the edges and took my sander and just sanded. Uh, you can even just use a piece of sandpaper and sand around those edges to clean them up. And then I put them in that frame. And, uh, and now I'm just taking these pumpkins that I finished and I'm gluing those uh, down, kind of like they're laying in a pumpkin patch. So I'll just kind of lay one slightly down so they don't look too uniform. And now I can start to add my um, plaster dipped leaves and vines. So, um, but first I'm gonna put these stems in here and this is just a piece of stick and I just kind of poked it in there and then add some hot glue and I do that on both. And then um, I'll add some Spanish moss to the bottom. And this makes a really unique piece of art, but I think it's really pretty for fall. And, uh, and you just take that um, stem and hot glue that in. And then you're going to take some Spanish moss and just uh, pull some little pieces apart and glue it down underneath your pumpkins. And I like to make sure that I keep it inside the frame. So you just kind of add a little dot of hot glue here and there until you get it really secure because you don't want your, your picture to be shedding. And this is just something that you can kind of create as you go. And like I said here, it's really important just to really press, press that, uh, that moss down and get it glued really secure. And then I start to add some of my leaves and vine. And uh, you just kind of pull pieces that you think will look right and just glue them until you get the look that you want. Um, so I just take some of that vine and uh, that has some leaves on it and just uh, decide where I want it. And I decide to kind of lay it ar around the bottom and just glue where, um, where you see it's a good place to glue. Uh, so I was able to stick that little stem down under that pumpkin and glue it and kind of glue to the pumpkin a little bit also. And then, uh, and then where I see that my leaves are going to touch my, uh, my pumpkins, then I glue there. So just find places that are uh, secure places to glue and just take your time and, uh, and get it really uh, secure. Now, I didn't mention here that I decided on that little pumpkin to make it more of that sea glass color because I felt like I was getting a little bit too much white. So that's why that change of color there. And then that, um, that glaze really uh, made these pumpkins look more realistic. So you just keep adding until you get the look that you want. And I know these leaves are not pumpkin leaves. It doesn't matter though. I think it still has a fall look and uh, not likely you're gonna have somebody picking it apart and saying those are not pumpkin leaves. Uh, but I decide here, I think that this one is too large. So I just cut that off and use that on the other pumpkin. Uh, but just um, just do what you think looks good. And although this one looks a little time consuming, it really is a fun one to do. Now here I'm adding a little bit of that moss around the top of the pumpkins also because I don't want anything showing at the top to make it look like it's placed on there. So that just kind of camouflages that top and makes it... Uh, look more like it's always been a part of that picture. You don't want to see that crack down the back. So just keep adding and eventually you'll get the look that you want and, um, and it will be a, a really unique piece of art. Here I'm just kind of adding some um, Spanish moss where I feel like it needs some touch up. As you can see there, that crackle finish turned out really pretty um, and really looks makes that frame look antique. And I think t uh, taking that extra step uh, 
on the background of this really brought it up a notch. It just uh, gave it an unusual look, uh, and a vintage look, and I think it was worth the trouble of all that layering. And I actually think that all of these have kind of an unusual look, so it's not something that you could just go anywhere and buy. And again, thank you to all the suggestions that you guys gave me on the plaster dip flowers because I think it made all the difference in the world. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.